Okay, uh, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, and uh, can see the screen as well? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'll wait for a few more minutes. I, like I said, I'll start at uh, two five, right? Uh, so if you'll have any friends who are missing, right? Just maybe give them a call and maybe remind them because today in the first class, I'll be touching a lot about the theory and, you know, I'll be teaching a lot of stuff as well. So we'll not be doing a lot of questions, questions, but depending on the question, I'll teach you the background of each question, right? So after that, the other MCQs from that same area Right? We will not be uh, discussing the theory parts behind it. So that is why the first class of each unit is like very important because I will be teaching you the backgrounds. Okay. So if there's any friend who would want to learn all of that, right? Just give them a call, maybe remind them that there is class starting in one more new week. Okay, uh, guys, do you all do the questions? Yes, no. Tried 2011 onwards, unit number six, macroeconomic equilibrium. Did, did not do. Okay, so most of you all have done five years. Yeah, I think around, we'll be able to do around only five years, right? So it's not a big task, right? Now, I think maximum, I'll say from unit six, 2011, all the way to 2021, we'll have 50 MCQs maximum. So for a day, we'll discuss half of it, right? So 25 MCQs maximum per week. So within the week, if you can find one hour and if you can kind of do the questions and come, right? That saves a lot of time and also makes you properly focus and you know what kind of questions come. But actually, if I tell you the questions from these units are very direct, right? They're very direct and they ask you very easy questions. But for that, you need to know the unit. Right. You don't have to know the unit very much in detail, right? Even if you know the unit in basic terms, you are able to answer these questions. Why? Because these questions are easy. They don't test, you know, very small areas in depth. No, they test you the basic. If you, when once we do the MCQs, you will see, right, that every year, same thing, they're testing it in different, different ways, right? So that is what they'll be ideally doing here. So we'll start with uh, 2011, right? We'll go through maybe somewhere until 2015, 2016, and then we should be able to wrap things up, right? So starting with 2011. So I'll give you one more minute. If there's anyone, any friends, anyone who is missing, just give them a call or do whatever thing and rewind, right? I'll start in one, one more minute. Uh, okay, one question. The reason firms in the short run to earn normal profits is due to free and exit. Exactly. It's because of free entry and exit. That is why they earn normal profits in the long run. In the short run, firms can earn normal profits, uh, super normal, abnormal losses, everything. But in the long run, a firm will earn normal profits because of free entry and exit. In the short run, they can earn anything. Okay. If you really want to know why, I'll stay after class and explain. Okay. Okay, uh, so any other questions before we start anything else? And also guys, uh, we might have like a free seminar on Tuesday, right? Which I will kind of uh, help you plan the next six months on what you should do for Econ and all of it. And I'll also uh, give some details about the fast track program because a lot of people ask. Okay, so mainly Tuesday night, I'm looking at somewhere around maybe 7.30 to 9 or 7 to 8.30, just a one and a half hour session. Right, it's on uh, how to stay motivated and how to kind of uh, plan your six months. So we had something in January, right? We had a seminar in January where I told you all what to do. So it will be a continuation of that, right? So not really a continuation, continuation, but something like that. Not the same thing, obviously, that will be discussed. It's a little different thing. I'll just show you all how you all can approach the paper and what you should specifically do in the six months and also give you some details about the fast track since y'all since a lot of people ask okay right so that's about it we'll start with 2011 okay okay so 2011 a levels we're starting with question number 26 that is macroeconomic equilibrium unit number six 
the question says the consumption function of an economy is given by the equation C equals uh, 600 plus 0 0.85, where C is consumption and Y is national income. What is the correct conclusion that can be drawn from this information? Savings are positive at all levels of income. Marginal propensity to save declines as income increases. Marginal propensity to consume declines as income increases. All of that. Now, before I really go into, you know, the answer and all of that, since this is the very first class, right? I'll tell you what this consumption is, what this savings is, right? What is this marginal propensity to consume, marginal propensity to save? What is average propensity to consume, average propensity to save? So I'll explain that part to you now. Okay, so I'm going to give you an overall picture, right, about consumption and savings, which will cover a lot of things, which is more than what you need for this MCQ. So in the future MCQs, we will not be really discussing those parts again. Okay, so that since this is the very first class, we are learning this. Okay, right. So you all can take notes, write down whatever you all want to, right. We'll talk about uh, consumption and we'll talk about Saving. So I will want uh, information from you as well. This will be like a short note, ideally. Okay, so we'll talk about consumption, consumption, and savings. That is what we're going to talk about. So first of all, I will want to know what does consumption and savings depend on? What is the main determinant? Consumption, so the um, consumption is the amount of uh, consumption you do as a household, how much of goods and services you buy, right? How much you spend, that is consumption. Then what is savings? Savings is how much you save. So what does these two depend on? That is the first thing. The first thing that you need to know that consumption and saving, right? It's a determinant. It depends on, right? It depends on income, guys. So the main determinant of consumption and saving, right? depends on, right, we'll say income, I'll come into the concept of a disposable income also, right, I'll, okay, so I'll just say income here, or I'll also say disposable income, I'll tell you all what is the difference, it's not the same thing, okay, so in very simple terms, guys, a person's how much he consumes and how much he saves depends on his income, right, so if a person is earning a very high levels of income, his consumption and savings can be high. But a low income earning person, his consumption and savings will be considerably low. So what we'll do is we'll look into one of this now. Rather than talking about both of it, we'll talk about consumption only, right? We'll talk about consumption. So if you look at consumption, if your disposable income, or in other words, if your income increases, what do you think happens to consumption? Income goes up. What happens to consumption? Does it increase? Does it remain the same? Or does that also increase? So if income increases, your consumption will also increase. If your income falls, consumption will also fall. So what type of relationship does consumption have with income? A positive relationship or a negative relationship? or a direct relationship or an indirect relationship. It has a direct relationship, right? So we can call it, right? We, I, I, I'll say C, consumption, and Y, income, or it can even be disposable income, YD, has a direct, right? Or in other words, a positive relationship, relationship between them. Okay, so I'm rephrasing what we did so far. I talked about consumption and savings. I said both of them depend on income. So then we started with consumption. In consumption, I am saying that consumption and income has a direct or positive relationship. So when income increases, consumption will also increase. When income falls, consumption will also fall. Then what do you think about savings? So I'll draw savings onto this. Okay, I'll put it in green. Right? So we'll say we have savings here. Okay, saving. So now, if the income increases, right, if YD increases, what do you think happens to saving? If income increases, what happens to saving? Now, if income increases, consumption increases. What happens to saving? Does savings also increase? Does it decrease or does it uh, remain constant? 
What do you think happens if income increases? Guys, remember, if income increases, your savings, right? The amount that you save also increases, right? Because come on, the more money you have with you, the more that you would save, right? The more money you have, the more you would start to save. So therefore, I can say this exact thing, right? So here also, I can say, right? Savings and disposable income has a direct or positive relationship. So when one of these increases, when disposable income increases, savings also increase, consumption also increases. Okay, is that part fine? Yeah, okay. So then one more thing that I would want to add here, right, before we really go into the depth things, your income. Okay, what is the difference between your income and disposable income? Y and YD. Income is Y, disposable income is YD. What is the difference here between these two? Okay, so remember, now I'll give you a basic example, right? A basic example is, now let's say you go to a job interview. After a levels, you all have started working, right? You all go for a job interview. In your job interview, this uh, whoever who is interviewing you at the end says, okay, uh, we are happy to take you and we will be uh, giving you a salary of 50,000, right? So they said, okay, I will give you a salary of 50,000. So now you're also happy. You started working now. Now, at the end of the month, right, when you're getting your salary, when they actually give you a salary, they are not giving you 50,000. They are, let's say, giving you only 47,000, right? Now, at the start of the interview, they said you they are giving you 50. But now, when you're actually getting your salary, they're only giving you 47. So, did the company cheat you there? Did they tell you giving 50 and did they... Give you four and gave you 47. Did they lie to you? No, guys. Now remember that 50,000, what they promised you is your income, right? But the actual amount that you got in your hand, right? The actual amount you got is 47. That is what you call disposable income. Disposable income means the actual income that you get that you can use for consumption and saving, right? The, the actual amount that you can spend. Okay, so YD, right? Now, for example, you had, let's say, an income of 50,000, right? You had an income of 50,000. Now, for this 50,000 income, you know what would happen? For this 50,000 of income, maybe you had to pay an income tax, right? You had to pay a tax. So, taxes have to be minus, right? You had an income of 50,000, and they said, okay, for, uh, a tax of Let's say how much? Let's say 5,000. So you minus the tax of 5,000. Plus, let's say there was some transfer, right? Some benefit that you have to get, an excess benefit. Okay, so taxes 5, transfer of, let's say, somewhere around 2,000. So at the end, how much is your disposable income? YD, you get a disposable income of 47,000. So that disposable income is the amount that you can actually spend, okay? So, dispo in very simple terms, from your income, right, from your Y, if you minus taxes, that is T, and add transfers, you get disposable income. So, if I am to write it as an equation, I can write it like this. I can say, YD, your disposable income is equal to your income, minus any taxes plus any transfer. So that is the difference between income and disposable income. That is one thing that you all have to know. Okay. So here in this case, I am talking about the positive relationship. No? So whether I say income or disposable income, it doesn't really matter. Okay. But you have to know that it is not theoretically the same thing. From your income, if you remove taxes and add your transfers, you come to disposable income. What is disposable income? In very simple terms, the actual amount of money that you can spend. Even though they said 50,000 income, you actually can spend only 47 because you only got 47 at the end of the month. Okay? 
that is y and yd okay so now from the income that you earn right i'll write it in this corner right now let's say you earn 50000 okay yeah okay you're earning let's say yd is 40 okay okay let's say 47000 so this 47000 you mainly use for two purposes what do you do with this 40000 47000 a part of it is what Exactly. From this 47,000 salary that you're earning, guys, a part of it you will consume. Right? Part of it is your consumption. Now, you need for your day-to-day -day expenses. Then the other part of it, what will you do? The other part of it, guys, you will save is your savings. So, remember, you can also say it this way. From your income, right? Income or disposable income, anything, right? Is equal to your consumption plus your savings because if you're earning 50,000 if you consume 40,000 that means you're saving 10,000 if you consume 45,000 means you're saving 5,000 right so your income part of it is consumed a part of it is saved right so you can say your y is equal to c plus x so if your income simple terms in in my example let's say income is 40 50,000 we'll really, just say income is 50,000, you're consuming, let's say, 40,000 and you're saving 10,000. So that is what that means. Is that part okay? These are just background things before I come to the main point. Shape questions. Yeah, so just background in so these two boxes here in the corner here are background information okay now we'll look into these concepts of average propensity to consume and uh marginal propensity to consume and things like that uh is y equal to c plus s or c plus i here it's c plus s i'll talk about how that i all comes a little later right so your income part of it you consume a part of it you now i'll give you a small example y equals c plus s only in a simple economy no no he, guys here when we're talking about why we're talking about a person's income we're not really talking about uh macroeconomic equilibrium i'm just talking about consumption and savings only i'm not talking about the national income don't think of national income macroeconomic equilibrium don't still go there when i come there i will explain that guys right so i'm still explaining the basics and then, right, I'll give you a few, I'll give you an example, right? I want all of you all to work this with me, okay? So I am saying income, consumption, and saving. So I'm saying when a person's income was zero, okay, now first of all, tell me when a person's income is zero, will his consumption also be zero or will he be consuming some amount let's say i don't have a job so i i don't have any income i'm not earning anything does is the consumption also zero then no guys remember there will be some amount of consumption why because you can't survive right now let's say i lost my job i lost my job this month right i didn't have any uh job so i didn't have any income but even if I lost my job, I still have to eat something, right? I still have to pay my current bill, maybe my water bill. I still have to buy some clothes to wear. At least I had to wash my old clothes. So there is some sort of consumption that is taking place. So let's say, right, when my income was zero, let's say I was consuming 600, right? I'll be consuming 600. So then how much do you think my savings will be? Exactly. I'll come back to that, right? How much will my savings be? When my income is now, remember this equation. This is where I'm coming from here. Savings will not be zero, guys. Y equals C plus S. Y is zero. C is 600. So how do you balance that equation now? If your income is zero, this is equal to this plus this, right? 
So remember, right? When your income is zero, yes, you will be consuming something. That means now when your income is zero, how can you consume something? It's not practical. You're not earning anything, but you're consuming for six hundred. How? Exactly. You are either borrowing from someone else, right? Or you're using your previous savings, right? Maybe last month I have saved something and kept. I am either using that old savings or I am borrowing from someone. In very simple terms, that is called this savings. You're taking from your savings. So saving is a negative 600. It's a minus 600, right? That is how it is initially. So I'll repeat my point. When you're earning nothing, when your income is zero, you still have to consume something, right? That 600 is called autonomous consumption. That is the consum autonomous consumption means the consumption at zero level of income. Even when your income is zero, how much you should consume is called autonomous consumption. And that does not depend on the level of income. Okay. Now let's say I have a salary of 1000 rupees. Right. And okay, so 1000. Let's say my consumption now is 1400. How much is my saving? Y is 1000. Consumption is 1400. My savings is minus 4. Perfect. So let's say I'm now earning 2000. Right? My consumption went up to 2200. Can you all tell me the value for save? I'll just I'll not put the plus here, guys. How much is my savings now? Exactly. My savings now is a minus 200. Remember, it's a minus 200. Now, let's say I'm earning 3,000. And I'm consuming 3,000. How much is my savings? Exactly. Now, my savings become zero. Remember, when you're earning zero, your savings is not zero. Now, all your savings became zero, right? 4,000. Let's say you're earning 3,800. Now, how much is your savings? At this case, exactly 200. Let's say 5,000. I'll stop from here. Let's say you're earning 4,000. Stop consuming 4,000. Now savings is how much? 400. You're earning of 400. Can you explain it again? It's confusing. It's a very simple area, no, guys. Confused? Guys, I'm simply saying, right, whatever that you're earning, right, your income, part of it you will consume part of it you will save, right? So if your income is zero and you're consuming 600 means Y is equal to C plus S. So if this is a plus 600 to get a final answer of zero, your savings has to be a minus 600. It's a very simple concept. If you're earning 1000 and you are consuming 1400 means your savings is a minus 400, right? Same way. Now, when you come to, let's say 3000, you're earning 3000, you're consuming 3,000 means you're saving zero, right? So Y is 5,000. If you're consuming 4,600, that means you're saving 400. So remember, savings initially will be negative and then only it will be positive, right? So I will come into these concepts of uh, marginal propensity to consume, average propensity to consume and all, right? But before I come into all of that, Shall we just look at a graph? How can you plot these numbers into a graph? Right? Remember, now in this macroeconomic equilibrium, whenever you're drawing graphs, the horizontal axis, right? This axis is always income. Always. Right? This axis can change. So here I'm saying consumption and saving. So look at my consumption. When my income is zero, I am consuming 600, somewhere there. When my income, let's say, is 1,000. So I'll just mark some numbers. Let's say this is 1,000, right? This is 2,000. This is 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. I'm just randomly marking some numbers, right? So there, when I'm earning 1,000, right? My income is 1,004. So likewise. So what I do, if I plot it on a graph, my consumption curve, will look like that, right? That is how 
my consumption function is going to look like. This is my C. How is, going, how is my savings curve going to look like? How is my savings curve going to look like? Savings, when my income is zero, I am saving minus 600. So you all know a graph, no basic mathematics. So if this is zero, right, minus 600 will be somewhere around here. At the level of 3,000, my savings is zero. So if this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, this is where savings are zero. So my savings will look like this. This is how my savings curve would look like. Understood? That is how you plot that into a graph. So remember, your consumption, right? Both of these will be upward sloping, right? Because when your income increases, both these values are increasing. So positive relationship, it's increasing. But your consumption will start from a positive value that is plus 600 in my example. And savings will start from a negative value, minus 600. It doesn't have to really be parallel. There is no need for that. It can be parallel, it cannot be parallel. It might not be parallel. There is no need for it to be parallel. Okay? Okay. Then coming into this point. Now, do you all know how to get the equation, consumption equation and the savings equation if they have given you something like this? Okay, so we'll, we'll leave the equation aside, right? But I'll tell you this. Okay, we'll talk about MPC, right? And MPS. APC and APS. Now, what is this MPC, MPS, APC? Right, this is very, very highly tested. If you look at your questions, most questions will be talking about this. So I'll explain what does this mean. Okay. In very simple terms, MPC means, right? MPC means when your income changes, how much of it are you consuming? So if your income increases by one rupee, how much is your consumption increasing by? That is what MPC means. Marginal propensity to consume. Because I'm hoping you all have some idea and you're not learning this for the very first time because I'm not teaching this for a person learning the very first time. This is not the approach I will take. I'm just summarizing things, right? So MPC, if you write as an equation, guys, it is change in consumption, right? Change in consumption divided by your change in income. That is what we call MPC. So guys, I'll write the uh, equations maybe down somewhere, right? So this is what MPC is. Now we can calculate MPC for all of these situations. Now, can you tell me when income increases from zero to thousand, consumption is increasing from 600 to 1,400. How much is MPC? You start from the second point here. How much is MPC? MPC is change in consumption divided by change in income. Our consumption is increasing by how much? What is our change in consumption? For 600 is becoming 1,400, right? So change in consumption is 800, okay? 800. What is our change in income? Zero is becoming 1,000. So change in income is 1,000. 800 divided by 1,000, how much do we get? 0 0.8. Okay, 0 0.8. So again, right, second point. Think when your income is going from 1,000 to 2,000, your consumption is going from 1,004 to 2,200. How much is MPC now? How much is MPC? It's the same. It's 0 0.8, right? So do that for homework and calculate. I'm not going to calculate all the points, right? But once you do, you will realize that the MPC at all of these points are 0 0.8. What does this mean? This means, guys, even when income increases or even when, can you see now here, income is increasing 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Even when income is increasing, your marginal propensity to consume is not changing. MPC will not change. 
remember that highly tested area. They will ask you when income is increasing, what will happen to MPC? Is it also increasing? Is it also decreasing? Or is it remaining constant? Remember, it is not changing. Okay, MPC does not change. Okay, right. Then what happens to MPS? How do we calculate MPS? I'll put the equations here. Let me put it in a different color. Green orange. What, how do you calculate MPS? Because MPS is when your income changes, how much is your savings changing by? Right? So it's your change in savings divided by your change in income. Right? So change in savings divided by your change in income. So if you're going from this point to this point, so when your income goes from Right, let's say zero to thousand, your savings is increasing by 200. Minus 600 is becoming minus 400. It's increasing by 200. You need to figure out that. Right, so your change in here, right, if you calculate MPS, because I'll remove this, right, you're drop things down. So MPS here will be change in savings is 200. Your change in income is 1,000. 200 divided by 1,000, you get 0 0.2. You calculate at each of the points, you will still get 0 0.2. At all of the points, your answer will be 0 0.2. So what does that mean? Your MPS also does not depend on income. It does not change with income. No matter what the level of income is, your consumption and your savings right? Your MPC and MPS are constant. Now, this MPC and MPS is also known as the slope of the curves. MPC is called the slope of the consumption function. MPS is called the slope of the savings function. Now, this MPC is not changing. No. It's 0 0.8 at all the time. That means, so it's a constant slope. That is why you have a straight line consumption function. If the MPC is changing, guys, you will have a curve like that, something like that. If the MP, okay, oh, you might have a curve like this, right? Every time if the MPC is increasing, you'll have a curve like that. But no, you're having a straight line curve. Because there's much more depth into this, right? I'm, I'm not going to waste time doing it. I'm hoping whoever who taught you all the theory or whoever who taught you all the revision would have taught you all that. How does this slope connect and all of it? I'm just briefing you all, okay? So what is the conclusion we can come here? MPC and MPS does not change with MPC and MPS. MPS does not change with income. So if your income increases or decreases, that is not going to affect MPC and MPS. Is that part okay? Yeah. Okay. And one more thing I would want to add, right? One more thing that you want to know is that MPC plus MPS is equal to how much? Exactly. Remember that MPC and MPS is always equal to one, right? So here, now when the MPC is 0 0.8, you should definitely be able to say, okay, MPS is 0 0.2 because those two together is equal to one. Because if your, now what does this mean? If your income increases by one rupee, you're consuming. MPC means what is the amount your consumption will increase by? So if your income increases by one rupee, your consumption is increasing by 0 0.8. That means let's say 80 cents, right? So if your consumption is increasing by 80 cents, the other portion is your savings. So automatically, your savings has to increase by 20 cents. So if your consumption is increasing by 70 cents, that means the remaining 30 cents is going into savings. So remember, always MPC and MPS are equal to 1. Okay. So then, what is average propensity to consume? How do we figure out this? Average propensity to consume. What is the equation? Anyone? Exactly. 
average propensity to consume, guys. How do you get an average? So APC, I'll write the equations. You guys, if you come in the middle, you will not understand anything that is there. APC is from your income, out of your total income, what is the portion you're consuming? That is what we're looking at. So it's C divided by your income, APC. How much, how is APS? It is your savings divided by your income, right? It's a very simple thing, APC, APS. Hoping you all know this. So then we can calculate average propensity to consume. So first of all, your income is zero. Okay, we, that point will be infinity, you can't calculate. Second point, your uh, consumption is 1,400, your income is 1,000. How much is your APC? C divided by Y, you get 1.4, right? Here, your consumption is uh, 2,200, income is 1,000, sorry, income is 2,000. 2,200 divided by 2,000, you get 1.1. Income is 3,000, consumption is 3,000. You get one. Income is 3,800, consumption is 4,000. Sorry, consumption is 3,800, income is 4,000. How much do you get that? 0 0.975, yes. Can someone reconcile the calculator or something? 3,800 divided by 4,000 is 0 0.95, okay. Right? Okay, that's enough. I don't, I'm not teaching you how to calculate APC, but I, what, what, what can you see from this? As income is increasing, what is happening to APC when income increases? That is my, that is your learning that I want to show you, right? So when income increases, right? When income is tested in MCQs, guys, I'm telling you, when income increases, APC decreases. The more and more you're earning, your average propensity to consume tends to fall, right? Tested in MCQ. Then what happens to APS? Calculate APS at the very beginning, it will be minus. So minus 400 divided by, let's say, uh, 1,000. How much you get? You get minus 0 0.4, right? Here you get uh, minus 0 0.1. Here you get zero. Here you get uh, 200 over 4,000 is 0 0.05, if I'm not mistaken, right? So APS, can you all tell me, as income increases, what is happening? Please wait a little, try to make my board a little larger to get a bit more space. Exactly. So APS, remember, right? When your income, guys, it's increasing, right? Minus 0 0.4 becomes minus 0 0.1, becomes zero, becomes 0 0.05. So when income increases, what happens? When income increases, right? Income increases, your APS increases, right? When income increases, APS increases. So no, that proper thing. Is that part fine? So I'm repeating, MPC and MPS does not change with income, right? APC, when income increases, it is decreasing. Opposite, when the income is decreasing. APS, when income is increasing, is falling. Sorry, when income is increasing, is increasing. APC, as your income increases, it falls. APS, as your income increases, it also increases. Hoping this, you all have learned somewhere and this was a recap for whatever that you learned. Okay, I'm wondering if I would want to, guys, are you all okay with the equation, consumption and savings equations? Yes, no. How to construct the equation? Okay, question. From these values that is here, from the, sorry, okay, from these values, right, from this consumption and savings values, can you all calculate AP, uh, the consumption equation and the savings equation? I'll give you all like one minute. Why 
these values, C these values, S these values. From this, I want the consumption equation and I want you to calculate the savings equation. Okay, I've got the consumption equation. I've got the savings equation. Nice. Anyone else know? I got a lot of yeses when I asked you if you know the equation, but not much of answers. Okay, consumption 600 plus 0 0.8 by savings. Exactly. Okay. So one more thing, I'm not going to really show it from here, guys. I'm not going to show you how to make the equation. I'm hoping you all would have learned. So from a table like this, right? When you've got a table like this of consumption and savings values, you should be able to come up with the equation. So most of you all gave me the right answer in the chat box, right? So consumption equation, guys, if you all don't know, please go and look into that, right? Consumption equation here is C is equal to, right? You all know the equation A plus B by D, 600 plus. 0.8 y savings equation according to this is minus 600 plus 0.2 y how it came please go and learn if you all don't know if you all don't know means you're completely blank with this unit that is because that is the one basic area that they teach you when they teach you this unit how to make the consumption and the savings equal what is the format right how to put in values i'm not going to waste time teaching all that hoping you all know guys I'm telling you all one more thing. If you all don't know these things, that means you're at a little of a bad level, right? Trust me when I say this, right? Six months to go for your levels. If this is the first time that you ever heard anything that I mentioned in this board, if it was the first time, that means you have been playing the pool this entire time or you have not gone for a class or gone to school, right? It doesn't matter whether you went for classes, if at least in school, it would have been taught. A private candidate, at least you should have gone for a class, right? So there is no real excuse. Either your teacher has not taught you, but that is very rare. Any teacher would teach this, right? The main reason is you are not paying attention or you have not studied, right? So please remember, this is just a wake-up call for any of y'all who are hearing these names for the first time. Y, Y, D, consumption, disposable income, savings, MPC, MPS, APC, APS, right? This graph, if you're learning it for the first time, there is a problem, okay? So before it's too late, before you all start to regret and there's nothing you all could do, start studying at least now, okay? Okay, so you can get a screenshot if you want to. It's a little messy. Unless you were here focusing, you will not be able to understand the whatever that's there on the board. But yeah, just take a screenshot and put on the group and keep. So in case anyone who missed writing it down can get a copy. Right? So someone take a screenshot and put. I will wait for like five seconds. Okay, so moving back to my board, right? Okay, so we're still in the first question. The consumption function of economy is given by the equation. Okay, so I've given the right values. 600 plus 0.85. Uh, where C is consumption, Y is national income. Correct conclusion that can be drawn, right, from this information. Right? Savings are positive at all levels of income. Marginal propensity to save declines as income increases. Marginal propensity to consume decline as income increases. Average propensity to consume is constant. Average propensity to consume declines as income increases. Okay, at least if you all were listening, you should be able to give me an answer. I clearly told you all what it is. Take one minute, read and see. Is savings positive at all levels of income? No, right? At when your income is zero, your savings is actually negative. So it this can't be the answer, right? So first one, no, right? Marginal propensity to save declines as income increases. Is it correct or is it wrong? If it's wrong, what happens? As income increases, what happens to MPS? MPS remains constant. I calculated and showed you that it was 0 0.2 in all the cases, right? Uh, that is wrong. Marginal propensity to consume declines as income increases. True or false? 
Exactly. This also doesn't change. Remember in our calculation, it was always 0 0.8 volts. Average propensity to consume is constant. No. As income increases, APC falls. As income decreases, APC increases. It is not constant. That is also wrong. And you end up with the final answer. Average propensity to consume declines as income increases. So you saw that with whatever that we learned here. So as income increases, went to 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000, what happened to APC? It fell. 1.4 became 1.1, became 1, became 0 0.95. It will keep on falling. So that is the answer. Okay, so if you all know your logic, it's a pretty direct thing. This is not rocket science. If you know the theory behind it, it's a very, very easy MCQ. I just explained the theory, right? In case you all have forgotten. Fine, answer number five. Okay. Then this part, in a closed economy with no government, the value of investment multiplier is five. But how much will consumption increase if investment increases by 200 million? Okay. There is a lot of logic behind this as well. Okay, just let me know the answer now. One, two, three, four, five. I'll explain how it works. Four, five. Two, five, four, five. Okay. I'll explain the logic. Let's see if the answer changes after that. Right? Okay. What is this multiplier? Right? I'm going to explain the multiplier process. Guys, the first class will I'll be explaining all of this. Right? So if you have missed this first class, next class, I'll just tell, give you the show the working, give you the answer. Don't ask me how it came if you have not come for the first class, right? So that is why I repeatedly told in the group also. So if you all have friends, at least now tell them to come. Not next week and then miss it. It's going to be a problem. What is this multiplier process, right? First of all, you need to know that this, right? Your equilibrium level of national income, why? Now here when I'm saying, why is national income, right? Equi national income. National income is a combination of C, I, G, plus X minus M, or you can say net export. So for your national income to change, right, one of these factors have to change. I'll give you a simple thing, right, a simple uh, question to calculate uh, national income. So we'll just do a calculation because these can be tested in the paper. Right, so we'll just do an example. I want all of y'all to do this example with me. Right? So I'll just give you values. Right, I'm going to say C is equal to hundred plus zero point eight. Why? Uh, I is equal to I'll just say five hundred. Okay, I'll just zero point nine. Why? That makes the calculation easier. Nine. Uh, G is equal to let's say two hundred. Exports, let's say, is equal to 150. Imports are equal to, let's say, 50. Right. Based on this, I want you to calculate equilibrium level, right? Equilibrium level of national income. I want you to calculate that. What is the equilibrium level of national income based on these numbers that I have given? It's a basic calculation. Can you, I'll give you two minutes. Can you work on that? As practice till the beginning, it's a very basic question. Okay, I've got an answer already. Nice. Okay, right. So for those who are blank and wondering uh, how to get this done, I'll show you. It's a very easy thing, guys. Definitely tested in MCQs in a lot of papers. Simply, you need to know at equilibrium, right? Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus net export. So y is equal to, c is how much here? 100 plus, 100 plus 0 0.9 y. Uh, plus i is 500, g is 200, x is 150, m is minus. Remember, m has to be minus imports. So then y is equal to 
add all the numbers there 100 500 200 150 minus 50 so 100 plus 500 600 600 plus 200 is 800 800 plus 150 is 950 950 minus 50 is 900 plus 0 0.9 by so now i need to find y so to find y i need to take that 0 0.9 y into this side so plus 0 0.9 y if i take it to this side becomes minus 0 0.9 so y minus 0 0.9 y equals 900. So guys, y here means, remember basic maths, y means one y, right? Remember the maths? So one minus 0 0.9 is how much? One minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1 y. So 0 0.1 y is equal to 900. So if 0 0.1 y is equal to 900, y is equal to 900 divided by 0 0.1. 900 divided by 0 0.1 is how much? Yes, if you can't divide 900 by 0 0.1, I am hoping there is a problem in your mathematics. That I'm not showing you division system is equal to 9000. Fine. Yeah, yes, I'm just showing the calculation. I'm trying to explain something more than this, but I'm just showing for your level, you need to know the calculation also. Now, in this same thing, right? I'm going to teach you the multiplier process, right? In this same thing, I'll show you, right? Now, I'm giving the same example, right? I want you all to calculate this again. But what I'm going to do is I am going to make a small change. Now, C is equal to again 100 plus 0 0.9. Why? Investment is increasing by, I'll say, 100. So, investment, which was 500, now is becoming 600 right so that is the only change g is 200 x is 150 m is uh 50. now i want you to say with these numbers calculate equilibrium level of national income equilibrium level of national Income. So if you do the same calculation, guys, I'm not going to show the calculation now, right? Most of you all gave me the answers. At the end, right, you do the same process. Instead of 500, now you put 600, right? You do the entire thing. At the end, you will get, right? You will get an answer of y equals 10,000, right? Now, this is where I'm going to teach you the multiplier. Now look at this question. What was the only change I did here? This 500, I made it 600. So investment increased by 100, right? Investment increased by 100. That you all agreed, right? That is the only change I did. I did not change anything else. But when investment increased by 100, national income, equilibrium level of national income increased by 1000 the equilibrium right equilibrium level of national income income actually increased by 1000 this increased only by 100 how did this increase by 1000 what is the logic behind this? That is my question. Yes, it increased by 10 times. I'm asking you why? How come when investment increased by 100, your national income increased by 1000? Okay, multiply effect, fine. But what is the logic behind this? How can that happen? Yes, I'm, I get it, right? 100 has got multiplied by 10 and it has got, uh, it has become 1000. But what is the logic behind it? Listen to the logic behind it, right? Listen to a practical story. Yes, you're all are giving me equations, multiply effect, all of it. Listen to a story, right? Now investment, I'll just say that, I'll give you an example of an investment. I'll say a firm is building a new factory. Right, so a firm 
invests, let's say, 100 million to start a new factory. Right, now when this firm invests or when investment increases by 100 million, what do you think happens? When this firm increases, spends 100 million to start a new factory. Now, can you give me a few expenses for these people? What would they have used this 100 million for? Okay, for rent. What else? Okay, so they would have paid maybe for the factory to buy some machines, maybe to pay salaries for the workers, maybe for different uh, transportation activities. Yes, electricity, all of that. So when the firm uh, increases, right, investment by 100 million, you know what happens? This gets passed on, right? So let's say, let's, we'll simplify it very much. And let's say this gets passed on as passed on to a worker, right? Let's say, let's say the workers, right? Workers get this 100 million. So let's say uh, they, do, they are not buying machines or anything. They're just, they, let's say they already have the machines and everything. They're only spending on salary. The entire 100 million, let's say, is on salary. Now, what will these workers do? Workers who get this 100 million, they will consume that, right? Now, remember, MPC is 0 0.9. So if they are getting 100 million, only 0 0.9 of that they will consume. So these workers, maybe they are paying their children's school fees, children's tuition fees. They are spending on transportation. So they are spending some amount. So let's say these workers are paying their children's school fees. So only, remember, only 0 0.9 of that. So 900 million goes as school fees. Now, what does the school do with that 900 million? What does the school do? So let's say the school who got that 900 million, they spent that, uh, right? They consumed 0.9 of it to pay salaries of the teachers. So 810 million, they have paid to teachers. We'll just assume, uh, guys, don't think about the numbers, right? Okay, now what will the teachers do? The teachers, right? Let's say these teachers spent it on their family food, right? So let's say I'll just say 100 million, right? Zero. I'm not going to give the guys, don't worry about the numbers here, right? So let's say 700 million, right? And then now the, they spent on food. So what will the person selling the food, let's say they spent it on a, uh, the shop next to their house, right? What will that guy do? That guy will also spend it on something else. So what happens here is it gets multiplied. I'm trying to explain that to you. Forget about the numbers here. Because of one investment activity, one small increase, right? It passed on. It went from one person to another person to another person to another person, right? So at the end, the equilibrium level of national income has increased by a multiple amount of time. So when investment increased by 100, it got passed on to the workers. Workers got it as salaries. Workers spent it on their children's school fees. The school who got that money, they spent it on their teachers. Teachers who got their salary spent it to, you know, buy food from a grocery. The grocery fellow who got that money, let's say he spent it something on his house rent. The fellow who got the house rent spent it on something else. Exactly, like credit creation. So this gets multiplied, guys, right? So that is the logic behind this multiplication process or multiplier process. That is why when investment increased by 100, see, investment went from 500 to 600 only. That was the only small change I did, right? So when invest went there, your national income increased by 1,000, 9,000 became 10,000. Why? Is because of this entire story. This is the multiplier process, right? You don't have to write this, right? But I'm just saying it goes from one person to another person to another person. That is why at the end, it gets multiplied by a high amount. Is that part okay? Okay. So now I'll come into a bit of calculation. Right? I'll come into a bit of calculation. Now the calculation that I'm trying to come here is how do you find this multiplier? Now, remember there are few equations. You all need to know this, both these equations very, very well. Right, so multiplier equation is I'm putting it in bold letters, right? Multiplier equation, right? 
remember these equals right now this same way guys now just as uh, investment increase same thing will happen if government spending increase right now instead of government spending 200 if i made government spending 300 same thing would have happened that also again the same reason let's say the government is spending to build a new highway so let's say that money goes to the workers as salaries they spend 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 so whether it is investment government spending even exports even autonomous consumption right any of that same thing happen but uh, this right k right kg is government expenditure multiplier k i uh yeah k i is i'll say investment um mm, multiplier right so that is equal to anything right everything is the same is equal to guys remember 1 divided by 1 minus mpc 1 minus mpc so how do you calculate this guys remember always right how do you get this value of mpc mpc comes from the consumption equation they will give you c equals let's say 100 plus 0. Point, uh let's say 8y right remember that 0.8 that b component in the consumption equation this is the mpc right so in our example how much is the mpc in our example mpc is how much if c equals 100 plus 0.8 by mpc is 0.8 in my example mpc is is 0.9 right so how do i calculate the multiplier then k is equal to 1 Divided by one minus zero point nine. So k is equal to. Yeah, I'll show all the workings here. One, one minus zero point nine is equal to zero point one. So one divided by zero point one is equal to how much? K is equal to ten. So it's ten times. So that is the. investment or the government spending multiplier right so what does that mean that means if investment or government spending increases by 1 rupee your national income will increase by 10 rupees it will get multiplied by 10 times that is what this means okay so is that part clear if your government spending increases your multiply your end result gets multiplied by 10 now look at my example investment increased by 100 it got multiplied by 10 you got 1000 that is equation number 1 right from this same equation right i will make another equation exactly now how from this 100 how do i go to 1000 i'll give you another equation so here if you look at this right equation number 2 i'll say change in investment okay so is anyone remembers how to put that triangle symbol on uh, this thing on the keyboard the change change delta i remember someone told me something shift and all time something something anyone remembers no i always keep forgetting that too. the delta sign on the keyboard uh, apart from copy and pasting no one you okay, get here my all right change so change in investment or let's say government spending multiplied by the multiplier is equal to the change in y i'll show you to you using this right so how much was our change in investment change in investment was 100 right investment went from 500 to 600 our multiplier is 10 times so that that means our national income or y increased by how much how so that's proved right our investment increased by 100 multiplier is 10 our national income increased by 1000 so that's equation number 
two. Okay, someone type it. I'll copy and paste. Okay. So I'll instead of change, I'll put the delta sign. Change. Change. Okay. Fine. Questions there. So what I'll do now is I'll rewrite this equation. The same equation, right? I will subject k. Now, I guess you all know how to subject things. So k is equal, if change in investment or change in government spending, multiplied by k equals change in y, what is k equal to? k is equal to change in y divided by change in the government spending or the change in investment. So those two equations you need to know. Fine. This is equals. I'll highlight the two equations. A lot of questions come from this. This and this. I have not talked about the tax multiplier yet. I will talk about that later. Is that part fine? Yes. Okay. So when investment increases or when government spending or any of that increases, equilibrium level of national income increases a multiple number of times. Okay. But now coming to this question, this question, look at this question. In a closed economic, no government, investment multiplier is five. By how much? Okay, if the investment multiplier is five, if investment increases by 200 million, by how much will national income increase by? Yeah, remember our equation? Use this equation. This one. K equals change in Y over change in G. So, if I am to use that equation, I'll just type K multiplier is equal to uh, change in Y divided by the change in I, right? So multiply in the question, they have said is five times. Uh, change in Y is what we are trying, we, are, we, we don't know, right? And then the change in I, change in I, how much have they given? 200. Yes. Okay. So how much is change in Y then? Thousand. Okay. So change in Y is thousand. Based on that, right? Based on that change in Y thousand, all of y'all gave me the answer of this. Answer number five. Mark it wrong. Whoever who told the answer number five, mark it wrong. The question is not asking you for the increase in national income. Change in Y is thousand. They are asking you if the value of investment expenditure is five, by how much will consumption increase? They are not asking you by how much national income increases. So if you put thousand, mark it wrong. Okay, complete wrong. Thousand is wrong. If the question said by how much national income increase, yes, the answer is thousand. But here we are not finding for the change in national income. We are finding for the change in consumption. It's very easy. So national income, right? Remember, there is something called a. Uh, there is round one and the. So, uh, what? Initial multiplier effect and then the secondary effect, right? I'm not going to go into that detail, right? So I'll simply show you a difference, right? So national income is increasing by, okay, now look at my example here. Now, my first example here, when the firm invests 100 million, right? This was called investment. Do you all agree that that is investment? Now, 
firm spending this on workers and workers spending it is called investment or consumption. Workers spending it is called consumption, guys. This, this again, this workers spending it on school fees, consumption. School fees paying this something here is consumption. They are spending here is consumption. So at the end of this process, at the end, national income increases by 1,000. So they are not asking you by how much national income is increased. By. They are asking you by how much is consumption increased. By. So how can you do this? From this change in national income, right? Change in national income, this 1,000, if you minus that initial change in investment, right? If you minus that 100, you get all the others. No. Okay, now, this, don't think of the numbers, right? My numbers are wrong, but I'm just showing you the logic. From this final value, the change in Y, if you remove the change in I, you get the remaining. No. You get this, 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 and this. All the remaining answers. That is the change in consumption. So if that is the case, how do we work with this equation? How do we work with this? They are saying, Final change in Y is 1,000. National income increases by 1,000. So if you minus the initial increase, initial increase in investment, investment is increasing by how much? It's increasing by 200. So you minus that, now you get the change in consumption. So change in consumption is 800. Can't we get R? What is R? That is how you get the answer of 800. There's actual more logic behind this, but I'm not, I did not explain the primary effect, secondary effect, and all that. But I'm just showing you a shortcut of how you get it. So if the question asks you by how much national income increased by, you can get 1000. But if they are not asking you how much national income increased by, they're asking you by how much will consumption increase. So consumption is increasing only by 800. Can't we get the answer to the MPC equation? Which MPC equation? This or this? I used the second equation. I used the second equation and I calculated the change in Y. Right? The, that is what I did, you know. K equals change in Y over change in I. So I got that the national income changes by 1,000. From that 1,000, I minus the initial investment change, right? I minus the initial investment change and I got 800 balance. Okay, revision class students, this was explained using an example, right? It was explained using an example of uh, this thing. There was a recent student who dropped me a question, asked me a question also on this area. Go and check the recording. It is there somewhere. We did this in December, last week of December. Exactly. Round one, round two, I explained. So can't we also get the answer with changes in Y and C and I since it's a closed second order? What is this I and C and Y? Can you explain me the logic behind your question? Can't we, can we also get the answer with changes in Y and C? Yeah. So I found the change in Y, change in national income is the change in Y guys, right? If you're, this is the change in Y, you put to the equation you found, but they're not asking you change in Y, they're asking you for change in consumption. So that is why after calculating change in Y, I'm going one step ahead. I'm minusing this 200. Then I end up with my final answer of eight. Got it, no? Multiply process. If they simply have asked you for the change in national income, answer is 1,000. They're not asking you by how much will national income increase by, they're asking you by how much will consumption increase by. That is why I'm removing that initial investment part. So any question you get like that, be very careful. See, are they asking you for the change in investment? Sorry, change in consumption, or are they asking you for change in national income? This change in why is your cal here, this equation, you're calculating a change in Y. That's national income. So if you want to get the change in consumption from that, you have to minus because this happened because of an investment increase. You minus the investment increase, you get the other remaining as consumption. Okay?
So answer there is 800. Understood that, no? Yes, these are not, it's, remember it's not rocket science, right? If you have learned it before, it should make sense. If you have forgotten also, it should make sense. If you are learning for the first time, then I'm very, very sorry. Yes, I'm also telling you, right? Uh, I'll just tell you, I'm not trying to promote my recordings or something, right? In case anyone has an issue with a unit, right? I'll tell you, you can definitely go and purchase my, uh, the recordings that is there in the website, right? That is a very cheap option compared for you to finding an individual class and doing all of that, right? Because that is very in detail expl explained. You'll get the Teut Courier to your doorstep also. It's all, it's given at cost, guys. There is no real profit that I make out of it also. I've just made the platform. So anyone who has missed, because I know at the last moment, a lot of people go for individual classes. One class is around 3,000, 2,000, 3,000, right? Even in one class, you can't finish the unit. So you can always go and catch it up. So just, I'm not going to talk about prices or anything. Just go to the website. You can purchase it. You, have, you can purchase the entire bundle of units or you can at least purchase one unit, right? So itutor sl.lk. So you have the grade 12 bundle, grade 13 bundle. Uh, or the individual unit. So whatever unit, that's a very cheap way to actually learn because it's a very, I'll guarantee it's a uh, detailed explanation of all of these small, small parts. You get a theory to it all, revision to it also, right? So you can actually go through, okay? Anything out of that that will not, so are you providing past paper recordings? Past paper recording these classes? Yeah, that I've told like a hundred times. Yes, for revision class students, you all get these recordings, right? Others know revision class students, you all get it. Okay. Right, fine. Uh 27 done. Good to go. You'll want a small break. We've only done two questions, but I'm fine, guys. I have no hurry. As long as you all learn something, I'm totally fine with that. Right. I don't want to just I, I could have just hurried and gone and gave you the answer for that, but I know that would not make sense. Since it's the first class, remember we anyway go slow, we learn the backgrounds. Later, when you get the same question, I'm not going to teach you backgrounds again, right? Now, later, if you get the same question on something like this, no background, I just put the equation, I show you how it's done, right? Okay, we'll do this paper and then maybe take a small break. Yes, yeah, so if you're there in the revision class, guys, I've told it a hundred times, even in the revision class, I don't know if you were paying attention, drop me a text uh, with your email, I will add you to a Google Classroom that has the recordings, right? Okay. Uh, question 28, other things remain constant. Which of the following would constant cost aggregate demand to increase? This is a very easy one, guys. So aggregate demand, AD, is equal to what? AD is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M, right? So which of this will cause an increase in aggregate demand? So it's... If taxation increase, no. Interest rate, no. Savings, no. Guys, it's government expenditure. Right? So, an increase. Remember the words here. They're talking about an increase in. If imports increase, will aggregate demand increase? No. If imports increase, aggregate demand will fall. It's not number five, guys. Right? The answer is number four. If government expenditure increases, your aggregate demand will increase. Imports, no, because imports is a minus here. Okay. That's an easy one. Mm, okay, this is also easy. The multiplier usually refers to how an initial increase in investment, government spending or exports leads to a larger increase in the level of what? In the level of prices, in the level of interest rate, unemployment, savings, income. There's yes, income, no, national income. No, that's what I told you. When investment, government spending changes, how much does national income change by? That is the multiplier. So pretty direct, guys. You will not get uh, questions as easy as easy as this. Answer number five. Previous question. Give me a second. Previous question. Answer is number four. Okay. Yes, class will finish at four. Hurry to go. Yes, you all can leave anytime, guys. I'm not going to scold you. If you all have classes, you all can leave. I will continue teaching even if there is one person. And I promise you I'll finish. I'll... Normal time, yes, two to four. Mm. 
Yes, and also one more thing, guys. I understand that you all will have uh, different different things, right? At different times, sometimes you know, some days you all might have like a personal commitment, right? So just don't drop me a text asking to change the time of the class. If it's just you right now, if it's just one out now, okay, there are seventy people coming. Let's say one of you all have like a let's say a wedding or uh, I don't know something. That it's not fair for you to just practically think. I'm not saying anything. Just use your common sense. Any other places you go and do this, you'll actually get scolded, guys. Right? Because just for you, right? They are not going to change a class where seventy other people come. Okay. So, if you have a personal commitment, that is your problem. But if a lot of people have an issue, I can consider. Right? Let's say seventy of you all, at least thirty of you all have some. All of a sudden, uh, maybe a. Another exam that is happening, or school term exam tomorrow. Then yes, I can maybe shift the time of the class or do something. Just because you have a personal reason, right? Don't request for a change in time of the class because that means just for you. The other, let's say, okay, there's seventy people today, you know. The other sixty-nine of them have to face a difficulty, right? So common sense. I'm not mad at you or anything, but remember, use your common sense. If you go for somewhere else and you know you do that, you might actually get scolded. They might not even respond to your message. Yeah, okay? normal things. Mm. Okay, according to the information given the table, the value of household savings. Yeah, yeah, good. So some of y'all do actually have reasons, but y'all still have. Okay? That is that's the difference between the commitment. Y'all know know how this program started and where it is now. I think we started with more than hundred and fifty people. Now only around half are there, and that also because of the first class. Second class now today we have seventy. Second class, I'm sure there is very much more or less people, right? So that's up to you all. I'm not going to force you all to do anything. Yeah. Okay. According to information, the value of household savings, guys. These type of questions, when you get, it's based on equilibrium level of national income, right? Remember, when you calculate equilibrium, there are three ways to calculate. One way of calculating is right. Ah, uh, withdrawals. Withdrawals equals injections. Yes, my theory class recordings are available to purchase. Theory class recordings are the revision class recordings. For your batch, I did not do a revision class, so in my revision class also, it's very like a theory class. I have a tutor, I have all the details are there. So even if you purchase a record revision class, it's like a theory class only, because I have taught you all everything in the revision class. Okay, so one way of uh, finding macroeconomic equilibrium is withdrawals equals injections in very simple terms. W equals J. Can you all tell me what the withdrawals are in an open economy? Exactly. You have savings. You have taxes. You have imports, right? What are the injections that come into the economy? Right. Circular flow of income. You have investment. You have government spending, and you have exports. So this equation is what you have to use. So they would have given you five of this, and they will ask you for one. Now here they are asking you value of household savings. They are asking you for this S, right? They have given you household consumption. You don't have to take into consideration. I'll show you how it's done. Uh, can't hear no. Okay, sorry. Small issue with my internet. I think It says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me now? Yes, no. Fine. I think there was a small lag, but should be fine now. Okay, so I'll repeat once again. Equilibrium level of national income you can find using W equals J. So what are the withdrawals S T and M injections I G and X? Right, simply they will ask you to find one of these. They will give you five of these. Simply it's putting to the equation. So savings is what they are asking you to find. So how much is taxes here? Taxes is the net taxes they have given, twenty five. How much is imports? Five. Okay, so that is that part of the equation done. How much is investment? Fifteen. How much is ah uh, government's purchases? Twenty. How much is exports? Ten. So same simple thing. What you do here is right. Ah, uh, you move it around and you find s s equals how much? Isn't transfer considered when calculating w equals j? Yeah. So when they have given you net taxes, you directly take the net taxes. You don't have to. Ah, uh, separate into taxes and savings. How much do you get? Is it a plus? Is it a minus? 
plus, right? So 15 billion going with your answer. It's a very easy question, guys. Savings equals, sorry, withdrawals equals to injections. You put the things, you find the answer, right? Now, these are basic things that you should be able to do. Answer is number. See, I'm going, I didn't do, I didn't do the calculation, but I'm going with the majority answers I got. Okay. So that is that. Then, yeah, that's it with that here, right? So, guys, even in these questions, right, I don't think any of it was actually hard. It was very easy things if you knew the basic. I, I don't see a hard question at all. This question would have been a little confusing because they asked for the consumption and not the national income. But others are, now come on, these 28, 29 are the easiest questions you can ever get. This is a small calculation. Even that, if you know the equation, it's a very easy thing. Okay. Done with this. Okay. We'll go with 2012. Okay. So here also same thing, right? Same equation, right? But last question, same equation. Now here they're asking you for the level of investment. Can you all calculate this? I'll give you all like two minutes. Same equation as the previous sum. I told you they'll give you five. They will ask for the missing one. Can you put in the numbers? Injections equals withdrawals. Put in whatever your numbers and find what is investment. How much are we getting, guys? Recheck your answers. Done? No, I've only got three answers. Others don't know how to do. It's w equals J. Right? I'll give you so saving taxes and imports are equal to investment, government spending, and export. So fill in the blanks. That is all you have to do. So Savings they have told is thousand. Taxes they have told is thousand two hundred. Uh, imports they have told is five hundred. Is equal to investment is what you have to find, right? Government purchase they are saying is thousand five hundred. Exports they are saying is how much? Four hundred. So you work it around and you get I. I is equal to how much? Eight hundred according to your answers. Yeah, so majority said 800, so I'm guessing that is the right answer. I did do the calculation. So answer number two then. Okay, yeah, these are very easy questions, trust me. Okay, which is the following will have a greatest increase in aggregate demand. Okay, so if you want to increase aggregate demand. Okay, you guys asked me first. Okay, so, okay, if you want to increase aggregate demand, first of all, to increase aggregate demand, right, what should you do? Do you increase tax or decrease tax? To promote demand, what should you do? Increase tax or decrease tax? Exactly, guys. You decrease tax, right? To promote, promote aggregate demand, you have to decrease tax. What should you do to government purchases or government spending? Should you increase government spending or decrease government spending? You have to increase government spending, right? So if the government increases their spending and they decrease their tax, it will increase the aggregate demand. So they are asking you, which will result in the greatest increase in aggregate demand, right? Now, if you look at it, 100 million increase in tax. Now, if you increase tax, no aggregate demand will fall. 100 million decrease in tax, yes. So if you decrease tax, yeah. Okay. 100 million increase in government purchases, yes. That's also right. But they're asking you what will cause the greatest increase, right? 100 million increase in government purchases coupled with 100 million uh, increase in tax, no. Right, increase in tax. A hundred million increase in garden purchase 
coupled with uh, that means together with right a hundred million decrease in tax so this one causes a double effect right you're increasing government spending you're decreasing taxes also so it's more better now answer number two and three in answer number two you're decreasing tax only in answer number three you're increasing government spending only now both of that yes will cause aggregate demand but if you do both together it will increase aggregate demand even more so they are asking you which the following result the greatest increase right yes two and three will increase aggregate demand i agree but the greatest increase will come from where from answer number five okay so okay question 20 the previous one give me a second so previous one the answer is guys please pay focus previous one answer is number two eight hundred million okay uh done with 23 look at 24 okay now this one i'm not gonna help you all right i want you all to work this now this you have to work backwards so if an autonomous increase in spending guys autonomous increase in spending can be government purchases can be investment autonomous consumption anything of spending of in an economy of hundred of hundred million leads to an increase in real gdp of 500 million. So your output has increased by 500. Then for that economy, the marginal propensity to consume must have been. So you use the two equations and you need to work backwards. Right? So K equals 1 over 1 minus MPC. That is equation number 1. Right? The other equation is uh, k is equal to change in y over any change in autonomous component right so i'll yes i'll just say a e autonomous expenditure that is anything so use these two equations and find the mpc based on the data given you need to find this how do you find this Guys, remember MPC, MPS can't be more than one. Okay. Okay, so based on the data, I'll just fill in the blanks. I'll show you how easy this question is. Autonomous increase in spending on economy is 100 million. Leads to a real GDP increase of 500. So change in Y is 500. Change in autonomous expenditure is 100. Therefore, can you all tell me how much is the multiplier? K is equal to ah uh, so k is equal to five multiplier is five now are they asking you for the multiplier no so it's not five is not the final answer right so i'm just showing you how the two equations connect they're asking you what is the mpc so now you use this equation now you found k you no know? uh, k is five so five is equal to one divided by one minus mpc minus mpc right so guys now you do basic maths right one minus mpc you take into that side so one minus mpc is equal to one divided by five i'm hoping you all know that this math is theoretical and can be done so one divided by 0 0.1 over 5 is equal to 0 0.2 ah, so 1 minus mpc is equal to 0 0.2 now let me take the mpc onto the other side so and i'll take the 0 0.2 onto this side so 1 the plus 0 0.2 becomes minus 0 0.2 minus mpc when i take in the other side becomes plus mpc so how much is mpc equal to 1 minus 0 0.2 0. 8. Simple, simple question. Yes, you don't even have to do the calculation. With practice, you should be able to get this, right? I'll just I'll just tell you with practice, right? If the MPC is 0 0.9, right, the multiplier is 10 times. You do and see, right? You get the calculation. If the MPC is 0 0.8, 
multiply is how much? Five times. And these are the most usually tested ones. Right? So MPC can be 0 0.75 also, all those things like that. But generally, this is the case. If with practice, I'm, I don't buy hard these guys, but with practice, you should know this. If the MPC is 0 0.8, multiply, that's how you save time. The moment you understand, okay, 100 became 500, multiply is 5. This is how your thinking should work. 100 became 5, right? Multiply is 5. The moment multiply is 5, after doing past papers, you realize, okay, multiply 5 means MPC is 0 0.8. So if MPC is 0 0.8, how much is MPS in this second? Now, if this question asks you, what is the marginal propensity to save? So if the question asked you, what is the marginal propensity to save, then the second one would have been the answer. So read the question carefully. From the same thing, they can ask you marginal propensity to save. They can change the same question next year in your year and say, same values they can give, they can ask you, what is the marginal propensity to save? Then you will see this equation, we can only find MPC. How would you find MPS? You simply have to know MPC, MPS is equal to one. So if this is 0 0.8, that is 0 0.2. That has to click, right? Simple question. Okay, uh, this is really velocity of circulation, but uh, comes with the next unit. But since question number 26 is from this unit, I put 25 also. Okay, which theory do we use here? Theory, uh, revision class students, this was discussed in your mock exam, final mock exam MCQ. Uh, in an economy where nominal GNP is 5,000 billion, money supply is 1,000, and velocity, the velocity of circulation is how much? Which theory do we use? Oh, ah, it's called the quantity theory of money. Right? But this is connected to the next unit, guys. Oh, money, you can even learn it in this unit, no, fine. Right, so quantity theory of money is saying MV equals pt right mv equals i'll type it in capital mv equals pt now what is m what is v as remember m is money supply right m is money supply v is velocity of circulation v of circulation uh, P is price levels, right? Remember this, P is price level. Okay. Y is real GDP, right? Real GDP or even GNP, that's fine. Then what PY together, right? If is also called nominal GDP, right? So PY together, sorry, not PY. Uh, yeah, so not the quantity, I'll use the equation of exchange here, right? The small change, right? The equation of exchange, right? So MV equals PY, M is money supply, V is velocity of circulation, P is price level, Y is real GDP, P into Y, we call it nominal GDP. So in this equation, they have told you money supply is 1000, M is given. V is what we have to find. V, you don't know, right? Uh, P and Y, they have not given separately. They have directly given nominal, right? So nominal okay, GDP, GNP, here is the same. Don't worry too much. Nominal GNP, they have said is 5,000. So if that is the case, how much is velocity of circulation? It's a very easy thing. Right? If you know the equation, there is nothing at all. So velocity of circulation is 5. Simple, simple. That. Right, but be very careful with this, right? Price level P into Y is real GDP. So if they have given you real GDP and nominal GDP both, remember P to get PY, either you'd only take the nominal GDP or take the price level and multiply by the real GDP. Don't take nominal GDP and multiply by price level again. Right? So PY is nominal GDP. If they have not given you nominal GDP, P is price level, Y is real GDP. So you have to find it that way. Re Revision class students, we did a question a bit more complex than this in your mock exam in CQ, where most of you all scored very well, remember? Uh, hope you all at least watch the recording if you all did not. Okay. 
25 dot okay 26 okay diagram below shows equilibrium level of uh equilibrium levels of equilibrium income levels for an economy under different aggregate demand conditions mm, consumption function aggregate demand one aggregate demand two da, 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 da. if the full employment level of income is y f is that what they've said yeah y f which distance measures the inflationary gap which one inflationary gap so y f is the full employment level of income right that is this okay so at that level at the level of y f okay what is the inflationary output gap right mm -hmm. yeah inflation employment level of income is yf right which is yeah okay which one do you all think inflationary output gap guys remember inflation output gap is where the economy is at equilibrium above the full employment level so inflationary output gap is this right remember this distance is called the inflationary output gap what i just highlighted so if the answer said gk that is also correct if it said rh that is also correct so you only have rh right the d in if the question was what is the deflationary output gap right deflationary output gap this has to be then aggregate demand function right it will be hns that would be the deflationary output gap but they are not asking you for deflation they are asking you for the inflationary gap right so inflation gap is uh rn RNS. Okay, so what do you call this? This gap and this gap, anyone? What is this? If I name this one and this two, what is that called? So this is called the inflation gap. This is called the deflation gap. What are these called? Deflation is this uh, H and S here. What are these two called? One and two? Mm, no, not a inventory accumulation. What output gaps are these? Hey, these are output gaps, right? Now, there is a little bit of technicality here, but don't think too much. Okay. So, if you look at point two, I'll uh, see if I have a. Uh, give me a second. Give me, give me one second. I'll see if I can find a picture. Wait. So I can't really really find a picture, but then what is it called? You know, given me like hundred to two hundred names. Final answer. Guys, this these two there is a small difference, right? We call these are called expenditure gaps and output gaps, right? Now this R and H is called right now. This uh, uh okay, just label these right here in a diagram like this. If YF is the full employment level, right? I'll I'll type these here. 
right so now you can write down right rx the difference between r to x that is called the inflationary right inflationary expenditure gap right remember those are expenditure gap the the difference between h and s that difference right please don't memorize the letters right what is that called then that is called a deflationary now this has to be not consumption function it has to be another aggregate demand function that's why i cut this off to teach you something extra so that will be deflationary expenditure gap okay so then what is the other one that one down there y1 y y1 to yf yf to y2 what do we call that guys remember the difference between y1 to yf right you call this a recessionary gap recessionary gap or you can even say the unemployment gap right unemployment gap okay then the difference between yf to y2 what do we call that this is called the inflationary exactly these are okay these are output gaps right remember this the part here this part is expenditure gap right these are expenditure gap right expenditure gap this here are output gaps recessionary output gap or unemployment output gap right these are output gaps right so this you can either call it the uh, expansionary yes i think that is also correct but i'll recheck that but it's usually called a inflationary output gap right oh i think guys whoever who told me expansionary i 100% sure i can't remember if that word can be used but you'll just guess it is it dying a note yes then i think you should be able to call it in expansion gap as well right but these are output gaps remember this yf y1 y2 and stuff if you are finding differences there those are output gap right if you are finding it in this one this is what you call expenditure gaps you don't have to go into very theoretical context on finding the difference and all of that is not really needed but just remember the basics because they are not going to test you that much in depth but in case they give you a diagram to ask and ask you inflationary output gap or uh, now this can even be called so remember output gaps and expenditure gaps that's two different things okay i'll see if i can find definitely the fast track i will kind of explain the i will show you the things but yeah for now just remember those basics so if they ask you for a inflation gap they are actually talking about here okay i uh, Yes, in my note, as I don't think I've used the word expansion. That is why I'm also not sure if the expansionary word can be used. But in my note, I said inflationary output gap, right? Inflationary output gap and the unemployment output gap. Can someone recall my? Yeah, yeah. So that is there because I added these two since other people also told. I think it makes sense. Yeah, but main two words I think is unemployment and inflationary output gaps, right? So. I have an understanding there. Again, also remember, guys, a question like this from the answers itself, you can check and eliminate the answers. Now, inflation output, they're saying S H, S H, not is inflation output. They're saying R H, looks like L G. Now, L and G, there is no real gap like that. Y F and R, Y F and R, no real gap like that also. Y two and G, Y two and G. So you can basically think itself an answer. You can use your common sense a little and answer these questions. right so when you get a paper please look into those yeah that's ideally it in that paper so i'll not really start the next paper but i want you all to on your end right to properly do it and come so again okay, if you all have problems with finding okay which questions are from unit number 6 please ask your friend at least right at least if you have learned unit number 6 you should know these questions are from unit number 6 right 
so that is why i don't spoon feed you all saying do this question number question number i i want you all to find the question number because i am expecting at your level you have studied the unit and you should be able to identify this is from this unit okay so 2013 14 there are no questions if i'm not mistaken 15 there are few then 16 onwards so do the do as much as possible and come we'll discuss them ideally next class right so i'm not going to start for 13 now itself are we okay yes a uh, fast track program guys will begin on the 10th of april i'll give you all all the details like i said i will have a seminar on tuesday help you all plan your next six months so in that towards the end of that seminar i'll give you all details about the fast track the last 15 or 10 minutes i'll give you all details about the fast track right so do comes i'll i'll make a flyer and i'll send it around so register and do come i'll give you all all the information is it on coming tuesday yes this coming tuesday for uh, uh tuesday probably night guys i'm not finalize the time probably i'm okay it's just one and a half hours that i need so maybe 9 to 10:30 or even 8 to uh 9:30 or anything right so yes if you are can't i'll give you all the recording no problem but ideally yes join that guys because that is not a class that is not something you can watch the recording and uh figure it out that's just like a motivation thing that you uh will come and i will help you plan it you can't watch motivation recordings no guys it has to be live okay so try your level best to come if not yeah i'll give the recording but i don't know how uh practical the recording will be but yeah okay so ideally i'll uh, say, maybe send a flyer and send a registration link for that so you all also can register if you all have any friends around in uh school and stuff like that you all can ask them also to uh join it's a free thing guys right so not the fast track i'm saying that seminar seminar is a free thing so on tuesday they can join and see and also maybe fast track first two classes maybe will be free you can ideally come and try it out if you all want that i'll tell you all another day okay so that's it i'll see you all again on beyond the classroom next sunday okay see you guys good night okay not good night sorry good evening bye bye